So I'll put this internet shit. Scramble TV. And what we used to hang in Love Park, and then the Masonic Temple was right there, and Eddie Savage would come by and say, listen, what you guys doing in about 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes, I got a couple friends who want to meet you. We already know what that is. So we'd wait outside, and they'd go there, and, and they introduced us to a couple of them that lived in this Lake Lane, New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is in Black, outside Blackwood. And we went there, and they were into, like, witch stuff. And at first, I'm like, I mean, listen, I don't care how many drugs I, I don't feel comfortable with these people. And, uh, and then one day took me to the cabin, and at some point I said, listen, these guys could kill us, and there'd be no one to even hear us scream. So Black Larry was this guy, eventually his name's Lawrence King. Uh, but we know him in Philadelphia and New York and, and South Jersey areas, Black Larry. Black Larry was this guy, he, to me, he was always a wannabe politician. He had a lot of money. He was in the philanthropy. And I knew him at, out of Washington, D.C. And what he was doing was he was hosting parties for behind politics and philanthropy in Atlantic City when Atlantic City first started, New York and Manhattan, and a little bit in Philadelphia, but a whole lot in Washington, D.C. And Larry used to have, now by this point we're well already into the child sex trafficking, so there's no one coercing us. We're well beyond that point. Mm -hmm. And Black Larry used to have these parties. So, uh, he, you know, they invited us. First they took us down, everything was on the up and up. When I first met Black Larry, I was kind of fooled because all the guys previous were all dirty old white guys with money. So here's a guy that looks like Al Sharpton a little bit. And, you know, pimp hairdo, smooth talks, street guy. And he's giving Eddie Savage through the South Philly Boys Club, uh, taking up like little minivans, like church type vans and everything, taking us down to give us tours of the White House and Washington, D.C. and everything. Oh, that's great, you know. So then afterwards, you know, there you would get to meet, uh, they introduced us as Black Larry. Because it was a white Larry, that's why we called him Black Larry, but he happened to be black. And as we're talking to him, um, you know, he looked like a, a legit guy up and up, and, you know, with the best interests of us kids. And then they said there was parties. Now, of course, if anyone said there's a party and we're invited, we know that we're going to get weed and pop pills and snort coke and uh, <laughs> drink alcohol. And Mad Dog was my drink of uh, choice at the time. And uh, so I said, yeah. So I go down there for one of these parties. I go one time. When I get down there, you know, we're meeting these guys, and and uh, they take us to some apartment building, but I'm already high and buzzed. And so I'm out there to hustle, and I figured, well, you know, if I hustle two or three guys during this party, because it wasn't always one time. Mm -hmm. You can go to two or three different guys and keep like a prostitute on the edge. Yeah, like you don't think you're, you know, you're like working it. I, at, at this point, point, I'm working it. Yeah, it's, it's not the, like a little later. the grooming part and you know, the coercion. You know the fucking past. deal, and you're going to try to get some money, and you're money. like smart. You're not going to fucking. The, the routine was we're pay. taking you down, introducing you to some of my friends, be nice yeah, to them, yeah. and they're going to be nice to you. Yeah, yeah. They're all the, we're trying to talk them in. We're, I'm well beyond that. Point. Yeah, yeah. That's 78, 79. Yeah. And they took us back, and I just never, I got invited yeah. a lot of times afterwards. Other kids that were with me from Philly went, but I didn't like. DC because there's nothing to do. So I, what I stuck with is a triangle yeah. or my pyramid. I stuck with Philadelphia stuff, Atlantic City, New York, and New York. There was a scandal in the White House with the first Bush administration where kids like yourself were coming to the White House with Lawrence King. And, you know, apparently having sex with staffers or whoever there, like I don't, you know, it did get released in the news, but it was basically covered up as a male prostitution ring. It wasn't like these at-risk youth kids being brought into the White House in the middle of the night for tours, you know? That unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a callboy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late-night tour of the White House last year. What, I guess what I'm getting at, it's like there's this organization, it's connected, it's feeding off of these kids that are at, root, at risk, which are like, funded organizations through the city and things like that and yet it's kind of almost seems like it's a front for like these pedophile prostitution rings where they're doing films 
and pictures and trafficking, you know, and it's all connected to these people in power in like very high places. It just, it's, it's insane, you know, and you were like firsthand, you saw it, you were there. I mean, you were taken on a tour to the White House. You met these people like San, crazy that Sandusky's possibly connected to Lawrence King. Did, did, did you know that? Or did you see any connection between uh, those? I can't put the connection. Yeah. Although, but Savitz is a Savage, one degree of separation between those yes, two guys. They, the Savitz, uh, there were social parties where uh, Sandusky came down to the Union League to get philanthropists to fund money towards the uh, Second Mile Charity. Mm -hmm. Now, Black Larry, Lawrence King, would be there. Yeah. Oh, however, I've never seen those two interact at, at the same exact time mm -hmm. as far as exploiting children. Yeah. I would love to put that together, but I just can't see it, at least in my experience. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who used to tell me, he's 10 years ago, he started telling me the, these stories that he was the, he grew up in a satanic family. That okay. was like Illuminati type satanic family. I think somewhere out like Westchester or something okay. like that. And I would just, it always seemed crazy to me, but there was like child sex stuff within their family and the community, people within the community, and ultimately like child sacrifices, which is just really crazy, you know, and hard to fathom and believe, you know, but when you're talking about, you know, Savitz making comments to you about how he's taking your power, you know, that's the same scenario with these type of things, you know what I mean? Whether it's in a sex act type kind of way or it's in some sort of ritualistic Ceremony, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not much different. You're still taking somebody's well, I, power I can, in some respects. I can give you an example. Uh, Eddie Savage had this one friend who was very weird, and he lived by Lakeland, New Jersey, which was right outside Black. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it was him, and they would have these. I didn't feel comfortable there, but there was other kids that went there, and they would have these rituals. And I went once or twice, and I felt weird because they would sit there and surround you with candles and they'd be black and mum and something. Really? And then they would perform oral sex on you and take turns. Mm -hmm. Like everyone would come by, male and females, and you know, and um, they wanted a virgin. So I, I ain't no virgin, but I'm gonna lie if I'm gonna sure. get 50 bucks out there. Yeah, I'm a virgin, pal. And they would all come. At least the Satan. Well, I, <laughs> listen, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I'm the Not president of the United fat, States if I made 50 bucks. So at the time, because all I wanted to do was get high. Mm -hmm. And and when I, I sobered up, I want to get high again. So the only way to do that is to make money. Mm -hmm. And this was the easiest avenue to do it. So I go out there, and they used to take us to, they had a, 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 a little cabin in the, um, the, the wooded area between Blackwood and Lake City. I think it's the Pine Lands yeah, or Pine Barrens. Yeah, like uh, Wharton State Forest is Or uh, whatever really it's big. called. And we went out there, and they would, it's, felt weird that I said, look, I, I'm not going to go there because I'm getting this weird feeling because they're taking turns going around performing oral sex and they got candles and you're naked and they're all touching you and, and singing, uh, humming some kind of weird stuff. And even then I said, well, I feel uneasy about this. And I never went again. And, and how I got involved in that is one of the times they had us uh, outside the Masonic Lodge at Broad and Felbert. There's a Masonic mm -hmm. temple. And we used to it's stand like outside. The Masonic Temple. Yeah. And uh, we'd stand outside and they'd meet us. And then they would take us to some nice hotel somewhere or some place in Cherry Hill off of Route 73 mm -hmm. or 130, these cheap motels. But they, like, they so made, Masons were involved somehow? Well, there was guys, or like, you don't know if there were Masons. Well, alleged, they're coming out of the Coming out of Masonic Temple. That in one in particular lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. And what we used to hang in Love Park, and then the Masonic Temple was right there, and Eddie Savage would come by and say, listen, what you guys doing in about 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes? I got a couple friends who want to meet you. We already know what that is. So we'd wait outside, and they'd go there, and, and they introduced us to a couple of them that lived in this Lake Lane, New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is in Black, outside Blackwood. And we went there, and they were into, like, witch stuff. And at first, I'm like, oh, I mean, listen, I don't care how many drugs I, mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable with these people. And, uh, and then one day took me to the cabin, and at some point I said, listen, these guys could kill us, and there'd be no one to even hear us scream. So, uh, and I was a tough kid, but you know what? When you're naked and you kind of got your bound and they're walking by, 
that, you know, who's going to say they ain't going to take off a, a knife and do a Lorena bobbin on you? Yeah, and you're so, already in the Pine Barrens. It's the yeah. best place to get rid of a body. So I stopped doing those things. But I met these individuals. Do you, do, do, do you ever have any friends that, like, disappeared or anything? Oh, yeah. We've had friends, when, especially in Atlantic City and Manhattan, mm -hmm. but more so Atlantic City. Chuck. We're talking, like, kids that are street kids that yeah, already, 12, 13, like, in a scenario where, like, people are they're off people's radar. So, yeah, pretty much we were considered throwaway kids. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, like, this incident, you never saw anything else that signified that well, maybe these people are some of, some of these people are into some on, other weirder shit? After my besides abuse, just late, well, after my abuse, I, I have a big falling out with a couple mobsters in the Gambino crime family because after my abuse in 1980, I had to make money. And I was a young Italian. So by the way, I think pretty sure it was the Gambino family that car bombed my father in oh. 1974. Yeah. That was mighty white of him. <laughs> he was involved in a bunch of shit in South Jersey. He survived. He was a big guy, so he's missing an eye now. But it's yeah. well, it, it's it's <laughs> just want to throw that in there. Later I on, I just got I I become you know myself and all the kids that were with me uh, became criminal types. Mm -hmm. I, I drugs, commit crimes, and. And I happened to get involved with the uh, Gambino crime family. I was introduced to them through Harry Riccobini, who was a mobster in South Philly. And uh, we'll get into that at, at, at later on. Mm -hmm. But I discovered some very disturbing things. And that eventually leads me to break away from organized crime and become this community activist. Well, can you just touch on, if you uh, don't mind? Well, Eddie Savage and others. And needed, how they were connected to that stuff? The game. Well, they needed, in the 70s, you didn't have the internet and you didn't mm -hmm. have technology. Yeah, and you needed to get your and pornography. And so they had, uh, you know, they would take pictures in 8 millimeter film of, of these sexual acts. And they needed someone in 1977 to, at least this is where i become aware mm -hmm. of it all. I'm sure it was going on long before me. And they needed someone to, they were having a problem with one guy. And they needed somebody to produce, traffic, duplicate, process the uh, films. The, 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 not just eight millimeter films, but the pictures, because mm -hmm. they, they would take Polaroid and schematics, but these guys cherished the pictures. So they had high quality and they're very pictures. Very valuable. And uh, so they wanted good quality work. But you couldn't go to any mom and pop, because these were dignified people in the community. You couldn't just go to any mom and pop spot. So and this is after the fact. You're working with these guys. Well, I, this is when I'm out there doing this. Okay. I'm, I'm not working. I'm still part of these. You're part of Savage. Taking pictures and Savage okay, stuff. Okay, this sorry. is before I get involved okay. in organized crime. What they do is they call a guy. We just call him the Big Pollock. The Big Pollock was, uh, we know him as Richie the Pollock. Later on, his name is, winds up being Richie Kuklinski. And now the Gambino crime family is producing all the pornography places, specifically out of a location that located and near 13th of Market called the Apollo, triple X rated movie theater. Right. And uh, they, there was a middle guy, so Savage would be the point person. They would use P.O. boxes through the U.S. mail to ship and receive undeveloped kitty porn. Then that would go, with, we, I would go with Eddie Savage to 30 to the market at the main hub, uh, postal hub. He had a P.O. box there. We'd pick it up, take it to 13th of Market, give it to a guy named Chucky Smith, who was the uh, a mob associate with the Gambino crime family that was the point person. They, you had to have point persons. They didn't want everyone to have their hands in it, even though everyone benefited it. Some people played uh, stupid, like they didn't know what was going yeah. on. And uh, so we'd pick it up, drop it off there, and, uh, and the mob started, uh, they had all these pornography places, started to produce exclusively the child pornography and trafficking the child pornography that Eddie Savage, Jerry Sandusky, and others uh, were doing. And then they, that, that turned a, a high price, including Black Larry. They would go and they would have to go through these guys to get that stuff developed. In that world, and when you get into the creepiness of that yeah. world, there's, it's all blackmail. Like people in power, people that do things, and people that, you know, and there's a certain, certain amount of sociopathic behavior in politics and in power and all these types of yes. things and I'm sure that all you know having uh, somebody in power with a child and having that photograph you can fucking get whatever the fuck you want done and I feel like you know like Eddie Savitz pandering children who's somebody who's a millionaire why the fuck would he do that but if he's somebody who wants power in his pocket and politicians in his pocket and this type of thing like, you don't have to get into politicians, but there were politicians and well, shit involved with let's, let's some of the this. stuff that you were doing. There's politicians, there were judges, lawyers, 
policemen, so like people from the district attorney's office, and there was a lot of people that had a taste for either adolescent boys or girls, mm -hmm. and some of them had a taste for younger than adolescent, yeah. infants, meaning yeah. seven, eight, nine years That's, old. I can't even fucking fathom that shit. So, uh, and uh, so you so know, imagine like having a, a photograph of a judge with a fucking child, whether that judge knew that he was photographed or not and what power you fucking have with that. And that's, to me, that's where the mob and all this shit, it all fucking culminates into this crazy organized crime syndicate thing, blah, blah, blah. And you can see how like huge, and it's why it kind of goes, I don't know, like it winds up at the White House and the Vatican's well, and these types I of things. I can tell you later on, me and Eddie Savage had a fall out in April, 1980. These child pornographers that were mobsters with the Gambino crime family gave me a job because they need somebody who's a young Italian wannabe, and I was a mob wannabe at this mm -hmm. point, and who weren't, wasn't afraid of beating up on black people or criminal types, and would not rat to the cops. So that, I filled in the thing, and they mm -hmm. were looking to recruit young yeah. people to become part of the organized crime. So I fit the thing, and I had a reputation, and people knew me, and I wind up doing it. And by 1982, I discovered that the Gambino crime family under Roy DeMeo and Robert Di Bernardo, they, these were two big capos that were, uh, that uh, uh, one day were, were trafficking pornography. Mm -hmm. And I expected the kiddie point, I didn't like it, but you know, business is business and this is this. I find child snuff films in 1982 and I got a problem with that. Yeah. And they were eight millimeter film, child snuff films, and I was very disturbed by what I saw. And I had a messed up life but now I, it, it sees, when you see children being tortured and you're a rape victim yourself, it bothers you, it becomes very emotional. So I bring it to these guys' attention and they don't like it. <clears throat> and they tell me I'm a, just my own business, and, but I, I don't like that because this is, these child snuff films are, for those who don't know, is pretty much it was kid, child pornography where the kid's tortured and murdered in the end and there was big money into this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, make some noises, I, I wind up pissing off Roy DeMeo, who at the time was, had uh, Murder Inc. And he had this murder machine in New York. He was most, one of the most feared mobsters in New York. Yeah. And, but the, you know, he also controlled, had influence in the pornography places the, under the game being an umbrella. And so he wants me to meet Richie uh, Kuklinski, we used to call him the big Pollock, or mm -hmm. Richie the Pollock. Yeah. They wanted me to meet him, but they're pissed. But now I know that, you know, these guys are planning on making, mm -hmm. putting me on the side of a milk carton yeah. for making a little noise with that and, and spreading rumors in, in the, through the grapevine, the mob grapevine, about this child kitty porn and the child snuff films. And even though I wasn't on the target list, I'm not hanging around because I'm part of that crew. Mm -hmm. So I wind up leaving. And then at that point, I started changing my life. No one was looking for me because now you have a new, uh, uh, you got a new people in charge and, and, and you know, they didn't really want to be bothered with their yeah. old people. And I kind of moved on in my life. It's fucking crazy and insane. Greg, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it, you know, for sharing that stuff. I'm sure it's painful but it's you've shared it before so it's easy for you to get the stuff out it's probably insanely embarrassing but we need people to talk about this kind of stuff to show some of the ugliness that happens in the world to protect our children to let things know like you know things like satanic cults which i never personally believed in now for some reason i do you know what i mean i've read too much snuff films i never believed in that stuff and then when you read about it it's fucking there and when you see the web of connections with all this stuff it's very frightening and it's very scary so thank you for being somebody that stood up against that and speaks up against it and takes a stand so thank you greg you're a good man one more time god bless you thank you for watching whatever take care stay in the deep end <laughs> good night goodbye